Welcome to the next in our video series, assembling Chilcat Warp materials. So we've done the splitting of the wool, we've done the boiling and splitting of the bark. Now we're gonna bring it all together and spin on our leg. I wanted to share with you that I'm spinning on a spinning pad. It is three layers of like a denim canvas kind of stuff, maybe a muslin that you might even stretch over a canvas, but it's got a really nice texture and you can see it's got a little like eye stitched onto it to hold all of those layers together and then finished in a bias tape. It's got ties that go around my waist and then this little tie goes under my knee and then around the front to really keep it tied down. So that's the beginning of getting ready. I um, want it to be firm enough so that when I push my hand down it, it's not going to slip away from me too much. It's not going to wrinkle up too much. And then we've got the cedar bark strips that we were splitting yesterday. There's more here standing by. I've got the bundles if I want to snap some of these out and go with those. And I've also got some hanging here on my little rack so I can also pull those off to use today. The last part of our tools is a sponge in a bowl of water, and your bowl can be smaller if you'd like, but it's nice warm water to the touch, like it's almost boiling, not quite. And I can do this and just wet my entire spinning pad. Some people get so much water on their little canvas pad like this um, that it gets their leg wet underneath, so just be aware that that might happen. You can also put a little plastic bag between this little mat and your leg, but a wet leg is fine. It's hazards of the job, right? So I've got that nicely wet. I'm going to grab a couple strands of this. So I'm going to undo some of these little bundles and get right to it. One and two. Let's see if I can really do this. Does it do the little snap? That's so fun. That's the fun part of spinning. All of it's fun. All right, then I'm gonna grab two, the two little tapered edges of these, hold them together here, and I'm gonna grab a couple strands of this. And actually, I might take all these little strands here and put them in the water. Look at this. I'm gonna put them down in. I'm gonna show you this. I'm gonna tip this a little bit. I'm gonna lay this around the sponge. Okay. So putting those down into the water and getting them nicely warmed up and softened, even though it's been, you know, just since yesterday that we split them, getting them nice and soft to be able to work with us today. All right. So coming back to my wool, I've got the tiniest little tapered edges here. And then I'm gonna pull one bark out from my bowl. Ooh, that's a long one. And I'm going to lay it alongside this wool piece, okay, just to start, and then grab another one. Oh, good. This one is a lot shorter than the first one, which is great because you don't want to have to add your bark or wool at the exact same time. So you'll see what I mean in just a moment. So I'm going to hold all four of these strands together, two pieces of bark and two wool in my index finger and thumb. And I'm going to move up towards my belly button and go this way down the leg to set the first spin. Now I'm just going to go through it and then talk you through it. Okay, so there's that part, kind of letting go. So already the water on this is kind of fading. I'm going to wet it just a little bit more. It's being sucked right into that wool. All right, so index finger, thumb, holding this down. I've got just a little bit of space between my hand and my thumb on this side. And then I'm gonna start spinning down my leg. And you can see that both strands are kind of spinning equally. And then I'm letting go with my right hand. So my index finger and thumb are pinching here, holding, and I'm almost keeping them separate from each other, just a little bit here. Moving up the leg, getting both of them spinning on themselves, the bark and the merino on each side, and letting go. And I do a little like with it. As I get faster, I just seem to like let it go just in the very slightest. And I'm really only getting just, you know, an inch or so spun every time I come down my leg. 
Many, many indigenous peoples in the world have spinning and spinning on their leg or spinning in their mouths and especially spinning bark from their trees in, in their traditions. So this is very cool. Oh look, this section right here, this particular section, you can see that it's quite a bit fluffier right here than the rest of this. Like this is really consistent and this one's getting a little bit fluffy. So I'm gonna take it and just take the bark away from it for just a minute and just pull it ever so gently and see if that can just get a little thinner. Thin that out a little. Mm, that's much better, much, much better. Okay, just checking on that. All right, we're also at the point where, see this? This strand of cedar bark is almost disappearing. So it's at the very, very tail of it. I'm gonna overlap one right there because that piece is so thin right there. I'm gonna add one more in here. It's a nice little thin piece right here. And you know, I'm gonna split it even right here. Look at that. Take that off and get it just a little bit thinner. And then put that in. I'm just gonna hold it in the midst of this pinch right here, holding it under my thumb. And you can give it just a little bit of a spin just to kind of embed it into your wool and then begin spinning it down your leg. And there you go, you've already started. You added your first cedar bark piece, pull it back up and continue spinning. And you'll see that as you, oh, that's fun, tingly. You'll see that where you add these little pieces, there's going to be this little nubby sticking out and you don't have to worry about it right now because when we're done spinning, we're going to go back and cut those off. Okay, so don't worry about what sticks up. All right, so let's get to adding some wool when we get down to the, the end of this piece, right? We're going to spin, spin, spin. I'm not using a lot of tension, or pressure I should say. I'm not using a lot of pressure on the wool itself. It's really a little firm, uh, how you might pet your dog, or a little fuzzy bunny or something like that. So really not trying to hurt my hand or the spinning pad, but really it doesn't take much pressure. Oh look, I just put one of these cedar bark pieces in. I'm going to spin it just a little bit before I, oh, that's messy. So taking it back, getting a little bit more water. Sometimes when you add, it does bulk things up and make it a little bit bigger. So I just want to go back and check it. Okay. Oh, again, with this little, it's just a little thicker. So you want to keep, keep your attention on that, how thick your wool strands are getting. Mm. Okay, we're getting down to the point where we have to add a little bit of wool. Ooh, are you loving how much that's tangling all around? It happens. Take that guy out. Hey. Oh my goodness. It's because you're watching me. <laughs> okay. So, um, spinning that back just a little bit. You can see that every few spins down the leg, I am adding quite a bit of water. The water is pretty magic in this whole concoction. All right, and then we're doing this. And I've got like just this little tiny point where it's tapering down, right? So now I'm gonna grab my next little bundle, find the end of it. I'm still holding on, right? I'm still holding it with this hand. I'm gonna find the end of this and snap it out. I love that. I make the sound effects. <laughs> I hope you make sound effects while you're spinning. All right, and then put this guy in. And oh, I really did give it a nice spin in there, so it's almost flawless, that join. Let's see, oh, get that one out of here. Oh, that little piece really is something. Okay, and go right to it and continue spinning. So where I just added that wool, did you see that, that I switched? where it was. I put it on the 
downside of my leg. This is what the one that I just added. So now I've got the shorter one on the uphill, or like closer to my um, torso. So once I've added on, I switch places so that the shorter one is closer to my torso and the long piece is down further on my leg, just switching location. So if this was the short guy, just flipped him that way, reset my hands and keep going. And of course, getting a little bit more water and continuing to spin. Ooh, and you can see there's no bark right there. Better put one in there. Get a new bark out of here. Ooh, they're starting to tangle on each other. That happens. Lay another bark in. Spiral that around. So you can see why you don't necessarily want to add all the bark and all the wool in the same points, right? It does make a little bit more work later when you're going back to trim everything, but it sure can bulk things up when you're adding, you know, if you have to add the bark and the wool at the same point. It's not ideal. You want to stagger all the splicing in. Okay, so here we go again. We're going to add a piece of wool. I've got, I don't know what that is, but a pinky's worth, maybe an index finger's worth of that left, and it really is starting to taper down. So, grab myself a little bundle, snap it out, and lay the tapered part here onto that part. Kind of find where it's going to stay the same thickness. Give it a slight spin, adjusting it. Yep, it's good. And you can see that's my little tail where I laid it in. I'm gonna keep that in there. And look, doing it again, switching so that the longer one is on the front part of my leg, down closer to my knee. And more moisture. Already ready to add bark. Adjusting the thickness of the wool a little bit each time, as needed, spiraling around. But you know what? It's time to wind up our little ball because it's hitting the floor. We've spun a yard. I do prefer to sit on a stool so that I'm a little bit up off the floor and I can spin an entire yard before I have to wind it up and backspin. Okay, the backspin is kind of, the backspin is the magic to spinning Chilcat Warp. The backspin is critical for uh, when you start cutting your warp to the correct length that you want to weave your blanket on. Um, that backspin helps to set the wool and bark together um, so that your warp doesn't unravel when you start cutting it. All right, so we've got a full yard here spun and I'm holding the tail that has not yet been spun, right? And I'm going to take the entire length of it like this and completely submerge it in my little bucket over here, my little bowl, completely wet, and then squeeze it out. So it's as wet as it can possibly be without dripping all over myself. Um, and then starting from where my tails are, the not yet spun version, I'm going to hold here, now pinching with my thumb and index finger of my spinning hand, and going to start up the leg, but now with my opposite hand, I'm going to roll back down towards my knee, and then where this is starting to buckle, right, and right here where I don't let go with this hand yet, I'm going to grab this, roll it up the leg, Roll it down, grab the next one, see how it's really buckling on itself? Be careful not to get this caught in the little tails here. You can see how I keep flipping it back over my hand. Okay, so spinning down the leg, pinch that one, spin down, and grabbing all that stuff down, letting it really buckle on itself, holding on. Oops, keep those tails out of the way. Down this way. Oh, it's really buckling. This way. And then we're going to stretch it over our knee right after this. So we're going to go all the way down, all the way to the very, very, very end, this whole first yard of spinning, grabbing the tail there. Okay, so now we're going to hold it on either end and then stretch it over our knee. All the way up. 
whoops, wrap it around the knee, stretch, 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 pulling on both ends, stretching it over the knee, pulling on both ends, nice and tight. And that spin still exists, right? You can see it's still buckling on itself. Here's the trick. You wanna make sure, again, that these little tails stay out of the way while you let go of this. So now I'm gonna intentionally undo this part here. Let that go. It's gonna unspin just slightly, but it's not gonna unspin. It's just letting go of the extra, extra spin. We have let it spin out. And starting now at the very beginning of our spin, we're gonna wrap it around a finger a couple times and then wrap this guy. And this is the beginning of our 50 yard ball of chill cat warp. So we're gonna wrap around and around and around. And if you're keeping track of your warps as you're spinning them, as how many yards you're spinning, um, you may want to make a little tick mark for this one. It's your first yard. Around, let's see. I like to leave about this much. So not sure what that is, about a pinky, maybe about a pinky's length of already spun material because you'll see why. We're going to take a little rubber band and wrap the rubber band around and around, keep it nice and tight. This is so that as we continue spinning, we're not unspinning the work we already did. Okay, that's what the rubber band's for. And here we go. Oh, I unspun it just slightly. And look at this, I need to add bark. So that's the first jobby. But I left, you can see, I left all this length here because as I lay it back down on here, I want room for my hand to be here without being like right on the ball. That would be really hard to start spinning again. So I leave a little, little lag room right there. All right, so I wanna keep spinning, which means I need some more warm water on here and lay in the next piece of cedar bark. Here you go. Cause look, that's the very end. And I'm gonna take this one and put it in. Get that guy spinning. Get this one just ever so slightly spinning. And going again, yay! Yard number two. Again, really a firm pet of a really nice dog. Um, maybe he's a long-haired, like, good bushy doggy, but um, you don't want to white knuckle it. You know, you're not gonna like crush your leg under here or crush the fiber under. Um, so here's the next snap it out, lay this one in, again tapered point to tapered point, finding that sweet spot where it stays, ooh I'm going to adjust that, hold on, finding that spot where it kind of stays the same thickness, and check that, look there's already one here that needs to be added, so keeping track of all the pieces. This is Chilcat Warp. If we were wanting to spin Raven's Tail Warp, we just wouldn't put the cedar bark in it, right? So it's a nice, uh, fast activity. Once you've spun Chill Cat Warp and you know how long it takes to spin this, you go to spinning some Raven's Tail Warp and you're like, ooh, this is so much faster and not to have to add two strands of cedar bark on either side. You just go to town. That's really fun. So when you start to get down and feel sad about your chill cat spinning, pause and start a ball of raven's tail spinning and then you'll be speedy speedy, feeling like you made some progress. Oops, feeling it, you can really feel when it just dries out a little bit. There we go. Congratulations, you're a chill cat spinner. So here we are, we've got quite a few yards um, spun on our little ball of chill cat warp. We are ready to wash it. We're gonna wash, um, wind it into a skein and then soak it in warm water with a little dash of ivory soap. And we use ivory, I don't know why, because it's not Dawn. It leaves a little bit of the actual lanolin in there, a little bit of the oils. So ivory soap dishwashing liquid um, found in your 
convenient grocery store anywhere, mostly. Um, wool light can also work, but we, I don't know why, we just love ivory soap so much. So I'm going to wind this around. Oh, actually, I'm not going to wind this around. I am going to start to put this into a skein. So I'm going to relax my legs since I'm not spinning right now. And uh, holding from where I stopped spinning, I'm going to start winding this around my arm, whatever distance your arm is, you know, however long your arm is. My arm's kind of short, but I'm going to make myself a little skein like this, going round and round and round. And I need to leave enough of a tail on this probably an entire round, right? So a whole tail about the same length as uh, all the way around. And I'm going to pause and then I'm going to use this to actually make a little tie. So going around like this, going down through here, right? And then maybe two or three times along here, I'm going to wrap that around. I'm using the f its own self to do it. Oh, that wasn't quite long enough. Look at that. I'm going to go to here and do one more. And then look at this guy. This is the other end of my piece. I'm going to utilize him and go around this one and go through here. So just looping him around to make that skein. So then I'm going to tuck this guy into this one so they're contained. So you can see I've got at least four little loops around. It's making my skein. I'm going to go to my kitchen sink and run the hottest water I can get out of my faucet, the kitchen sink. Hopefully yours is not more than 120 degrees. And uh, putting it down into the hot water with just a dash of ivory soap, letting that soak and really submerging it so it's completely wet, completely wet. A little bit of bubbles in there and letting it sit for about 20 to 30 minutes or until the water gets cool. Then I'm going to bring my whole thing out once it's set for 20 minutes. I'm going to just gently, gently, gently squeeze the excess water out, bring it back to the sink, run the warmish water, not quite hot, hot, run the water over it and just very, very gently squeezing because you don't want to felt your warp, right? So you're going to squeeze the warm water out of it and rinse it. I probably like put it under the faucet, gently squeeze probably two or three times just to get the little soap residue out. Then you've got your skein that's all bunched up again. And what we're going to do is now set this spin completely and let it dry. So I like to wrap it around my stool or the back of a chair, but we're going to pop a, a stool up on the table so that we can wrap this around nice and tight and let it dry and finally set that spin. All right, we've got our wash skein. It's been gently squeezed out. No more, no more smell of ivory soap in it. And well, I mean, it smells like it, but no bubbles are coming out. I'm just going to go along and gently untie all the little pieces that I had tied around gently, just looping really around, all half hitches. Um, undoing this, and here is the magic. All right. So this is where I want to keep it around my wrist, like draped over my arm or around your elbow or wherever you want to do it, because it will try to tangle on you. OK, so starting on one end of this, I'm going to begin wrapping this around the stool. To begin wrapping it, I have to go at least all the way around and then tie it. And people say, oh, I don't want to tie it. Well, you, you know, that's the best way to get it to be holding well. Ooh. Okay, so I'm holding that, tie that one around, and then I'm going to pretty much unwind this all the way around the piece. So going this way, holding on to my skein, and I want to put a bit of tension on it, so I'm letting it really stretch, right? So I'm going to put some firm tension on this. Ooh, you can see it really pulling on that. Going all the way around like this, getting every bit off of here. Ooh, I'm letting go of this. This is going to be messy. Where'd my little tail go? Really bringing that around and really wrapping a good amount of tension around my stool here. Um, not worried too much if they overlap, but ideally they don't overlap. The little strands don't overlap. They're just next to each other. Going to get some good tension in here. Ooh, this is fun. Phew, we're finally untangled and we can continue wrapping around the chair. 
So here we go. Making sure you're giving it a really good stretch and tension. Um, pulling, pulling on your warp and going all the way around and then tying it off here. And I'm just going to tie it to itself, going around a loop and then through the loop. La la la. And I'm going to let that sit overnight to dry. We've got it all wrapped and tied off. We're going to let it dry overnight. And tomorrow, when it's all nice and dry, we'll cut off our little tufties. We are back. We've let this dry overnight. And we're going to go through our whole little piece and trim off the little tufty pieces where there's any bark that's sticking out or any little nubbies of wool. See this? So you can go along and kind of find where it's getting kind of fluffy, where the little fluff pieces, and we're gonna trim them off. So you're gonna go in with your little scissors and don't go this direction to cut things. You're gonna put the blades of your scissors parallel to the work so that you're not gonna accidentally cut it, hopefully. So going in with your snips or beard trimmers or thread trimmers. Although if you use really nice skingers or like fiskers or something like that, just know that you will dull your blades from cutting the bark. Um, just a little bit. So have them designated as your little, your little trimmers. We are grooming our little warp here and going on and cutting all the little bark pieces, all the little woolly pieces and that's it. I'm gonna go through the whole thing and it's still on the stool. I like to do it while it's on the stool because then I can really see where all the little pieces are that need to come off. And sometimes you'll see that it's like, there's a piece here that's like, ooh, should that actually, yep. Sometimes you have to un undo it just slightly because it's kind of bunching up and find that spot and trim it off. Yep, so you're gonna do that to your whole skein or your whole ball of warp and trim all those little pieces off. The cleaner you make it now with all your little tufties trimmed off, the easier it is gonna be to weave later without anything poking through your work. And congratulations, you just spun your first chill cat warp.